No, you can't back down. Better figure shit out. Oh, great. Overestimated. Am I trying to compensate for what? For who? You should take it slow. Don't assume that you are in the same damn same like a rerun. It's been a while since you were here. Fix up your focus to finish the year. You cannot break, no, you cannot. You are the one at the front need to set. I'm trying to feel that good pain. The time that makes me feel good. You can open up my brain. Walk around, touch the art real quick. Just for the hell of it. some wrong ways, but maybe if I could be better, learn a bit from you, I could be half as wise, yeah, that good pain, good pain, I got know Nina Simone uh, okay so this is a cover Nina Simone if you don't know her check her out she's very good it's a very good song it's called Baltimore written by Randy Newman apparently <laughs>
Take care of each other. Take care of your community, huh? Beat up little seagull.
it the big things, the little ones? No, no. Tell me what is your truth so maybe I can see things clear. Now I need to see the world through your eyes. Do you see color, color? Oh, you cut the blind in the nighttime when you can't sleep. You holding your head, constantly thinking deep. Your heart's torn to several parts, and a part of me is trying to figure out are you a prodigy and proud of me? I can't, I can't comprehend half the things you say. They go over my head. I am, I am so impressed with the way you dress your mentality.
This will be our last song. Thanks for having us. We're a fat astronaut. Find us on the internet. P H A T, space astronaut, dollar sign for the S. Um, yeah, streaming services, YouTube, all that jazz. Here we go. <laughs> Saving my life tonight, saving my life tonight, saving my life is nice. Saving my life tonight, saving my life tonight, saving my life, don't go it away. Saving my life tonight, saving my life tonight, saving my life is nice. All the birds and the bees, they be falling to their knees when it came to the worst case. Start by saving my life tonight, saving my life tonight, saving my life is nice. Saving my life tonight, saving my life tonight, saving my life.
Well, hello. Hey, Chad, how's it going, dude? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Uh, Dylan, how you doing? Are you in your car? I'm in my car. I'm in my car. I'm parked. I have a, um, a brand new, freshly cooked arepa right next to me after work. You know, I'm, okay, I'm living well. Oh. Uh, right knowing you, you're probably on your way to a gig or a rehearsal or something. A rehearsal, yeah. I'm sorry, yo. Oh, uh, but I am parked in front of the moons, though. Tell the hummus I said hello. Oh, I will. I will. Hummus is humming over there right now. Yeah, Mark, what's your shirt? Tell us about your shirt real quick. It's the Cordoba shirt. Remember Cordoba? I love Cordoba. Madam. Oh, West. Madam West. Oh, nice. It's uh, the bike co-op. Bradley Street bike co-op. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. I live like right over there. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All repping. We're all repping local people. I remember you wore that shirt to our Toad show a couple years ago. Uh, yeah. I sure did. I told him I would, so I did. That's what's up. You are a chat of your word. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow, I've never heard that phrase before. So, oh. um, so okay. Um, as you guys know, we are currently Zooming to have a nice little chat with... Uh, these college kids. What's up, college kids? College, college kids. kids. Hello. I remember college. So, so, Mark, which college? UMass. Yes. Hello, college kids at UMass. Yes. Yeah, I played basketball for UMass one, uh, for um, one, you know, we all had like college basketball team names when we were in like fifth grade. I was on UMass. Hey. So you were on the UMass basketball college team. You, you made the team. Well, but it was for like the recreational group in like the town that I lived in. Like, so we had like, we just named all our teams after colleges. You didn't make the team. You just named the team. I got it. Okay. Well, no, I was on a team that oh. was named after UMass. I didn't not name it. Playing for the college. Got it. No, not playing for the college. I thought you could ball hard, but I got it. I got it. No, I'm pretty good. I played for a few years. I, I couldn't dunk back then, though, because I was, like, in middle school or whatever. But now. Like, <laughs> but now. <laughs> now, I can't dunk. Yeah. We did this whole uh, set for the college folk. They're going to be cutting it up, playing it throughout the, uh, throughout the year. Um, they wanted to focus on um, talking about health, mental health societal health mm. uh, internal external things because the world's gotten crazy right mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. not that it wasn't crazy before it's just a new level of of crazery mm -hmm. you know for everybody and so uh dylan um how do you keep yourself healthy you know and like healthy yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty broad term of what healthy means to you. But mm -hmm. when you think of healthy, how is it you keep yourself healthy? Mm -hmm. Well, 
one thing is uh, I eat breakfast every morning. For me, that's what I need, you know, uh, super high metabolism. You know, I'm going for the physical and then I'll go to the metaphysical too. Um, so I take supplements every day. Like I consume a large amount of like elderberry in various forms. You know, it's not, it's not just a hip trend. It actually like amazing for your immune system. Um, I... What am I doing right now? Breathing. I'm I'm like taking like mindful, mindful breaths, breath work. Breath work really helps. Um, you know, five to ten minutes every day kind of split up throughout the day. Um, you know, when I can, you know, sit down and just kind of observe my surroundings and focus on my breath. Um, you know, even yeah those little, you know, few minutes, moments are super important for the rest of the day. Um, what else? Um, you know, I do cardio. I bike and walk a lot of places. I hike. I like to be in the fresh air. I think fresh air is amazing. So you got them big legs, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Travis was asking about my leg workout the other day. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, fresh air, you know, being around trees and water and plants and insects, you know, plants that you can eat, foraging, you know, local, like, pick, like you know, being able to collect like local plants that are actually like high in nutrients, you know, things like that. So, which I've learned since quarantine started. Do you just go outside and uh, pick some plants and start eating them? Like a salad, what we bring a salad bowl and a fork? Um, not quite. Not quite. I'd recommend that everybody wash their fruits and vegetables before they eat them. Um, yeah, there's like this, um, there's this plant called lamb's quarters that grows literally like a weed because it is a weed in my backyard, but apparently it's really high in nutrients. Uh, but it's got like this like powdery stuff on it. You got you kind of got to run it through the wash a little bit in order to like, eat it, you know. So, like. You want to make sure that like the plants you know not defending itself with its poison before you know when you start eating it <laughs> um but uh but yeah, yeah yeah be careful out there if you're foraging good tip mark what, what about you um i've been trying to eat healthy like um you know the sally's plain tomato pie you know there's no moots on it so it's you know doesn't clog your arteries you know it's just that nice sauce with some basil, some fresh garlic, you know, um, and, uh, you know, trying to, um, you know, exercise, get a lot of outdoor activity going for some self-care, you know, like I've been doing a lot of kayak lacking you know, kayak lacking is a beautiful thing. It's good for your upper body. It's good for your mental health, all that kind of stuff, breathing in that fresh air, you know. Um, been mountain biking, um, uh, hiking, been going hiking, stuff like that, you know, uh, and then also for mental health, just been like working on music on my own, you know, music, uh, that's, that's a beautiful thing to express myself and get all of, you know, everything that I can't put into words comes out in my music, you know what I'm saying? Like everything I could possibly imagine, I could I could get out in in music. Yeah, I agree on the music front. The uh, endless, boundless, fluid experience that is the creation of music. Um, except I'll add words for mine. It's, it's I do the I do the vocal pipes thing, like the writing thing. But but producing and playing and figuring out how to create things, whatever's going on in the mind's radio is. It's definitely a good release. Um, I think I got to go outside more because I really don't go outside and I mm -hmm. should. Y'all are y'all are informing me how how much outdoors I'm lacking. Yeah, you got to um, get that natural vitamin D, Chad. Mm -hmm. Right. Not, not none of this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are on the internet a lot now. Um, and since, you know, there's chaos from climate to politics to police brutality to protests to corruption to collapses to death to sickness to all of these things we are constantly in the face of 
this bombardment of news, good or bad, or just information, whatever it is, it's, it's a continuous onslaught. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, the news outlets, TikTok. I mean, uh, like, like all of them are about like just feeding you inst- information nonstop. So I have um, tried to make it more of a practice to like step away from the, the socials for a, 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 for a bit, whether it's a day or, or a couple days or like, I don't respond to messages for a period of time or like whatever it is. I'll, I'll, I'll take time away from the internet just because continuing to be in there all the time is it's, it, they're very divisive platforms. Mm-hmm. You could get lost in there real fast. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, yes. Hey, Kitty. Introduce Chad. us to this kitty. What's, what's its name, Chad? Odin. Odin Reinhardt. Odin Reinhardt. Sounds yes. very Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's from a video game. My uh, roommate got a new cat and uh, also has a dog. Wait, where's the dog? And who is this roommate? It's my friend, Fernanda. Fernanda's yeah, got that can... dope band called Fate. Fate. Mm-hmm. F to the A to the capital T to the capital E. Yeah. But since Fernanda oh. has all these pets, hanging out with animals is apparently very relaxing. You know, they like to cuddle. They like want slash need your attention. They, you know, well, it, it, it's just nice. It's just nice to be around pets. I didn't grow up with pets. I've always wanted a dog. And now I live with three of them. And this little cute kitten is uh, just running around smelling stuff. It's, it's very good. It's very good for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so like what uh what practices uh do you have that give you strength or joy or stability? I feel like you guys going outside is is like a is like a strengthening activity for soul and body. You know, I, I like to cook. Like I make the world's greatest banana nut bread. Oh yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the vouch. Um, and I find cooking that experience to be uh, like a, a cathartic one, like a, like a good one that like makes me enjoy it. I like the creational process beyond music, but like food and videos and, and whatever. Cooking is, has been really great. So like, yeah, what are you guys doing that? Uh, along the lines of, of cooking, making specifically a lot of pesto and that's been just amazing just you know vegan pesto just like again foraging plants and growing herbs um and you know incorporating those into like something that tastes really good and it's actually kind of medicinal too i mean it's got garlic and lemon and like all these herbs and stuff and so it's like it's pretty potent and amazing also journaling, uh, often outside. I mean, I keep I keep journal, um, and you know that's like you know an outpouring. You know, sometimes you know things kind of have to, you know through either a musical process like sitting down with my instruments or through just writing. You know, away from away from my instruments. Sometimes where like you know sometimes you know we we can be at a loss for like as as you know creatives we can be at a loss for words for certain things that like you know we can funnel into into musical expression and sometimes like sometimes when i can access my thoughts and feelings in verbal form i will (laughs) and that uh makes a lot of sense for me and i guess it's part of also mental health as well so that's been keeping me alive well i've been trying to do you know like a lot of uh cardio and you know exercise a lot and stay healthy because you know we're always having to be out wearing masks and this and that anytime, you know, around people got the masks on this and that. So it's, I feel like, like if I weren't, you know, taking care of my body, it would be difficult for me to, you know, breathe comfortably and stuff like that with the mask on, just trying to stay positive. um, Even, even through sometimes things are negative, you know, um, but trying to um, rise above and uh, trying to be a good contributor to society. 
and at the same time take care of myself because if we don't take care of ourselves then it becomes possible to be good contributors dude what's a good contributor to society mm. and, and, and on top of that how do you stay positive when shit is bad or it's like sometimes it's like not great you know so, so like in the example of grief like processing grief whether it is the, the loss of a, a family member or the end of a relationship a, a, a business arrangement or like you know the world sort of ending that we have been dealing with how is it that you aim to stay positive in the face of like not good stuff so to me positive doesn't mean like happy necessarily or it doesn't mean joy necessarily it means keeping things in perspective right um so one one you know um when i see all this sadness happening um like or or even just something like the pandemic that's something that every single person's going through you know i i had some moments you know some real freak out moments about it like some um uh like panic attacks and this and that but um i've been trying to rather than kind of freak out like that i've been trying to kind of educate myself about it and you know go through the correct precautions to make sure that I do not contract it so that I do not also give it to other people, right? Which is a huge cause of anxiety. Um, so what I've been doing is, um, you know, always wearing my mask. I bring my sanitizer with me everywhere I go. I sanitize my hands before I touch a doorknob, after I touch a doorknob. That way, when I touch the doorknob, I'm get, not getting germs on that doorknob. When I collect the germs from the doorknob, then I sanitize my hands again so that I don't have those germs anymore, right? I've been getting, trying to get tested regularly, uh, social distancing, all those kind of things. It gives me a lot more peace of mind and a lot less, you know, in freak out mode over it like I was at first. It sounds like you're saying doing your uh, sort of civil duty to like take care of other people going beyond the individual, not only for the individual, but for your surroundings, for others as a whole. That's kindness, man, because as we all know, there are some uh, some of those who don't think the same. It, it, it is frustrating to watch, but it is the reality of the world that we live in. Um, you kind of already answered my next question of how do you contribute to a more healthy world? You're talking about taking precautions and caring about more than just yourself. Honestly, so something you touched on before, actually, I, I wanted to, I guess, in terms of like being a responsible consumer and producer of, of in circulator of information, you know, whether it be about COVID, whether it be about, you know, um, the various forms of, you know, state violence that are super high profile right now, always been happening, but are super high profile and super under the lens of a camera everywhere right now um whether it be about things happening internationally which you know because of like the black hole of like trump we never hear about really because he's <laughs> focused on him and so like you know to you know get maybe getting outside of our our not into our comfort bubble just like just like to be to be a human these days we have to go the extra mile i think to um be discerning in what we consume so that we don't get overwhelmed with things that don't mean a thing and that we have this to have the room for things that matter and you know if it, that that room can you can only fit like three or four things in that space you know that's something you know you at least hold you know some space and consideration and maybe just like be able to engage people we know you know in conversation or some kind of action around things are going on um you know um, i think we get overwhelmed way too easily and uh, with um with just how many ways like there are to do things or like you know how many calls to action there are through the internet and um yeah a lot a lot you know how many things require 
you know, outside funding in order to function or how many individuals kind of, you know, require funding in order to like survive and, you know, who are making public asks for money, which is like, we'd love to give all our money to all everybody. I mean, at least I would think so. At least in this band, like we are, I think, a, a group of, of caring individuals. Um, and, and, and we can, we, we do better to, um, to be just discerning and, 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 yeah, I um, I wanted through the music, you know, through the the art that, that I create and that I'm a part of. I feel like it's important uh, in general, but now that we're like sort of in the revolution or a revolution of sorts, to reflect the times in uh, a currency that can be understood by many. Right. So like, you know, in the civil rights, you, you got Nina Simone, you got Sam Cooke, you got a bunch of other people speaking poetry, writing books, doing movements, doing whatever. But like Nina specifically, who I am a big fan of now, uh, she used her very literal platform to re reflect the time. She started writing about black people about the civil rights movement about movements and things that were weighing on her her own struggles and pains and like it kind of destroyed her career but she kind of also made a real lasting legacy because of the genuinity community the the honesty of of what she was saying of what she was trying to connect to the world and that's what i want i want whatever stage i'm on whatever platform i have to reflect the things that impact me as a human and like humans in general and try to push uh, human existence and, and society and life forward for like everybody not just some of the folks but like everybody what do you think are in need of healing it could be any anything you, you come to mind. I know what comes to mind for me is uh, if if our society was like a router, like a modem, you just need to like unplug it and like restart. You know, we keep just trying to, I don't know, wait for it to reset or something or like I, maybe not upgrade the modem or whatever. But either way, we've it seems like, it feels like we've been doing the same loop over and over and over again for for decades for centuries for eons for whatever and something's gotta give one something's gotta give two something's gotta give right like something just has to something just has to change something has to be different for wherever the world heads to post corona post this revolution that it's actually different we don't say it's different we don't pretend that it is we're not toting around like we're going back to the trash normal that it was we demand change and find ways to implement actual change now how that happens not a clue i i don't know i have no idea what i'm doing and i'm not sure anybody does but i think humans as individuals and society and communities and local or federal or whatever i think the whole thing could just use like a reset a reset sounds good this is the healing can start when you acknowledge that there's a wound you know what's that what's that malcolm x quote when like you got a knife in your back and you're not even acknowledging that the knife is in your back and you pull it out a little bit and say it's better but it's still in your back you got to pull it out so the healing can even start all together um and we're not we're not there yet as individuals and humans but i i think we're working on it i think so yeah uh what do you think mark so um i remember like at the beginning of lockdown um i kept hearing all these things about about basically like people weren't out for like a, a couple weeks right and um people weren't you know using up resources like crazy for a couple weeks and I kept hearing about all this stuff about like nature basically repairing itself, right? Um, 
So now I, it's sad that it took a pandemic for that to, you know, for us to kind of see that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not even sure how many people even saw that um, or paid attention to that. But I think that if we did, you know, take better care of nature of, of the world, we would take better care of ourselves. We would take better care of each other, right? Um, and I think that would be a positive thing for all. Um, so, so that's just something that I noticed, you know, I was, I was very, uh, it was very painful um, towards at, at the beginning of, of lockdown for a number of reasons. But that was one thing that kind of kept me positive is hearing that this hole in the ozone layer ab above the Arctic was repairing itself and, you know, things like that. Um, that was like this kind of like shining light of like positivity in a very, you know, negative time. Yay, sort of, because we're going right back to our old shenanigans, um, but it was nice. But it was also nice to see that that is, that how quickly okay. that's possible. And it, it, it gives me more hope that, you know, if we have, if we at some point get the right people in power, they can kind of educate more and say, hey, well, look at how this happened. So this is not something that is just a lost cause. We can do this, right? Yeah, it's gonna, gonna take, uh, take some time. Oh, it sure is. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully time that we have, but uh, it's definitely gonna take some time. Dylan, what do you think? I was gonna say, well, I was gonna say something along the lines of Mark, I, 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 specifically about, about the land, you know, land we live on, land. Um, kind of been eroded and, and um, barren of, of, of resources, at least like, as far as like, you know, humans are concerned, you know, there's a loop and it scars, it literally leaves scars in like the land, you know, um, the way we really like literally dig in, you know, um, you know, for our, you know, the human needs that we think we need. Or, you know, these things we think we need to be more efficient. I would say, you know, we've become very disconnected, you know, and like pandemic, you know, it's like, all right, disconnect, you know, kind of limiting of, of intimacy and things like, you know, interhuman intimacy and things like that. I think what has been the case for even longer, um, and specifically because of, you know, the legacies of, of imperialism and, and colonization and um, capitalism, it's... Uh, it's meant that um, so many, so many people just don't have good, healthy connections um, to the land. You know where they're from or where they are. You know, I don't know what it would take necessarily to kind of like return. You know, just to the land in a sense, or to return to to repair. You know, to repair relationships with it. Um, but you know, I've seen um, you know smaller scale, like local scale. Um, initiatives for, you know, food sovereignty and farming, right, right in New Haven, right, uh, Love Fed New Haven, things like that, farmers that we know, educators that we know, um, kind of bringing people, inviting people back to kind of like relationship with the land, um, which I think is super, super valuable and breaks the cycle of capitalism. We can grow more of our own food than we don't have to rely so much on underpaid labor <laughs> or not paid labor, uh, slavery, um, in order to live, you know, in order to sustain. The uh, only solution to that I really see is time and mm -hmm. awareness to the changes that we need. But on that note, I'm going to bring our conversation to a close. Uh, thank you to all of you college humans um, who have tuned in and are watching this in our music. I wish you, we all, Fat Astronaut, although this is three-sevenths of Fat Astronaut, we wish you well uh, in the cool craziness shift that has now come um, and life and the world. Um, so from fat astronaut to all of you 
May peace be with you on the sun and your moon. All right. Love you guys. Love you.